kind of crazy. on the notion of a scab. It smells like politics, though. Maybe it's got something to do with the flask he reaches for from time to time. What exactly is a scab? A kind of a worm. Content with mere survival. They come, they want to do our job for shittier pay, screwing over both themselves and us. Everybody loses. Hmm. Hold on. Where do they all come from? It's me. Somewhere in the ground, I think. You don't seem to like them much. Gotta be bloody stupid or freaking evil to scab. Or I guess scared, maybe. But scared of what? Of who? Personally, I'd rather beg than scab. If the gentleman shouting on the street came begging, maybe they'd have gotten something. Have you tried talking to them? We've explained the matters, but they don't listen. This lot would be reasonable and go home if the big guy wasn't riling them up all the time. Uh, I'm not a scab, I'm a cop. I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop scab. <laughs> Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. <laughs> Speaking of, what brings the RCM here, to the wild north? Come to see the strife? Any idea who killed the hanged man? The mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Why even do such a thing? The man whispers a jaunty tune. A coastal breeze ruffles his hair. Ever said you have a key to the door? A key, huh? What door is this key supposed to open? Uh, he said it belonged to a weasel. Oh, say no more. I got you. I got that key right here. And let me tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike. Working class solidarity, as they say. I heard something about a weasel. And it didn't sound like a local polar weasel, if you know what I mean. Wink. Polar weasel? <laughs> oh. I know what you mean. What? Wait, wait, wait. I'm pretty what? sure he's actually Occidental, though. So you're gonna be committing fratricide, my racist friend. I am not racist. What you're looking for is a basement door behind the greenhouse. That's behind the whirling in rags. That's all I know. Our organization is what you call compartmentalized. Means we keep out of each other's business. Okay, but where did you get the key from? The janitor gave it to me. Nice fella. We talked about life and things that really, truly matter. None of this mess we're in, this jiving and juggling. What's it for? To feed our children, I guess. Anything else I should know about this task, this weasel person, when he'll be home? I'm more of a philosophical dog worker. I like to talk about the big picture stuff. Who I am, who you are, what we are fighting for. He means he's not going to tell you because he doesn't know. But he will shoot his mouth off with you now that you're working for Everhart. Why are you striking? We're negotiating our share. Your share? Aye. Wait, so not page... Wait, sorry. Wait, so not wages or pensions or... This stuff. 
They already covered. At least you got the benefits. That's something. It's not enough. Not enough to get ahead. More about keeping us in our place. The man whispers a jaunty tune. A coastal breeze ruffles his hair. Nice talk. Gotta get moving. Wait. Can I go down that way? Yes. Greater Repito. Industrial Harbor. Open the basement door behind the greenhouse. I don't know how we're supposed to get there. Wait, what's that? Is that his car? Because I actually do need to. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that toy from oblivion. The Cupris Kinema motor carriage. Open the door. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. A scent of leatherwork and heavy fuel oils washes over you. Pick up the radio. The frequency tabler lights up, and a green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens, radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. Hi, Alice. This is Officer from the 41st Precinct speaking. Nice to meet you. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. You wonder what the Lieutenant's default radio station is. Um... Could you connect me to the 41st precinct? I have something I need to report. Just a second, officer. 10 to 10 five. This is 41st. Come in. Over. The man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop. And cops know relay code. 10-4, message received. 10-5, relay message. What's your status? Over. 10-18, state your message, sir. Uh... Need to report my badge missing. 10-9, over. My badge, I can't find it anywhere. Basically, it's gone. 10-4, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 1022 the captain. Over. Is it him? What does he want? Uh oh. Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Uh. Who is this? This is communication officer Jules Pidieu, sir. Over. No, the other one. You mean your partner? Over. What is he saying? <coughs> He's asking who you are. I'm his goddamn partner. Oh, God. It's your partner, Satellite Officer Vitmar, sir. Over. Did he lose his memory along with his fucking badge? Uh-oh. Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? 
Oh. It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Jeez. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not for use a his badge. Defend yourself immediately. They're laughing at you. Uh. Haha, -ha. officer lost his badge. Haha. -ha. Like I'm the first cop to ever misplace his badge. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs uh, sarcastically. <laughs> oh god damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Mm. The light officer Vikmar is wondering Already if you might like be him. joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Mullen dicked us. Come on, operator, tell them to stop. This is serious. He's asking you to stop. Says this is serious. Of course it's serious. He lost his fucking badge. Satellite officer Vikmar concurs. Losing your badge is serious. Over. Well, this conversation's going nowhere. Can't we just move on? I just want to get it reported and be done with it. 10 for I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! What a douchebag. What's going on? Super Cop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? Oh my god. His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Enough with this. I have other things to discuss. Captain Nine, come again. I didn't get that. Over. New heights even for Captain Sober. Oh my god. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his <gasps> gun too. Oh shit. <laughs> Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun too. Over. Oh fuck. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um. Yeah. Lying over the phone. It's easy. Just say it like it's the truth. And then it becomes it. No, of course I didn't lose my gun. He says he didn't. Thank God for that. That would have been a nightmare. I don't even want to imagine the poor prick who has to relay that kind of news to the captain. Losing his badge is bad enough. Tell him to find it and fast. We can't have some gangbanger running around with it. We're all glad to hear you've not lost your gun, officer. You need further assistance. Over. Uh... 10, 10. Transmission completed. Standing by. Over. Roger that. 10, 10. Over and out. Hmm. Yeah, that went so fucking well. Wednesday, 7, 15 a.m. Oh, Roy's pawn shop. Ask cash for faster times. Perfect. Yeah. I just want you to look at it. It's 
some kind of machine, an antique cash register. Bust of a woman. The plaque simply says DEI. In the dark, a film projector is whirring away. Mostly military wear, with a few more eccentric fashions thrown in. It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. What can I do for you? Mm. Sorry, I feel like I'm interrupting you. Oh no, not at all. I guess I haven't had many customers lately. RCM or otherwise. Who are your customers, usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake. People who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Honestly, I think some of your selections are more tasteful than others. It keeps me entertained. Oh, okay. I didn't mean to be snobby. He's well composed, but underneath it you sense psychedelic processes bubbling. Some kind of drug, maybe. Um, let's try it. Feeling warm oh, and yeah. enthralled by the movement of light while the mind continues to race forward. Lucky bastard, he's probably on Parolidon. It's tough to come by on the street. Perel? Oh, I can't even pronounce it. What is that? A drug developed by the military to treat and prevent radiation sickness. It has psychedelic side effects and it makes your eyes turn yellow. Ugh. Doesn't sound good. Mm. Uh, is it just me or is it really warm in here? I try to keep the shop at a comfortable temperature. I didn't mean to offend you. I'm not offended, officer. There's something I'd like to sell. Let me have a look. I'll check my pockets. Anything else you're thinking of selling? I'm so dumb. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Uh. Another time, perhaps. Okay. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not mm. protective of my tools, like some men are. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters in your hand. You can do good work with these. Cut chains, locks, and ropes, especially belts. Take the hand crank to flashlight. It's robust, weatherproof, and well-made. Police issue, blue. 
lets you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand, heavier than you'd think. Useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers and the radio on its hook. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. As you tap on the gauge, the There's no use pressing the heat button. Translation. We're not going anywhere right now. Alternative translation. Don't even think you can drive my MC. Okay. Yes? Um... Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. Hello. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? What kind of a store is this anyway? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance and Biographies of Famous People. <laughs> books? Postcards? Easy. Even a kid would know all of this. Nah, it feels inappropriate to lecture this girl. Don't be a fool. As an expert, it's your duty to tell what you know to everyone. Don't tell me what to do. Sir, are you okay? You've been standing here silently for a while now. Uh, is it okay if I ask you some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. Um, you know what? Never mind. Ah, there we go. Finally. <laughs> hey, what's that noise down there? There must be another way into the building. Oh my god, that was loud. Fuck. Oh, wait, is this it? This must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. Use... Banana's key to unlock the door. You try to be as silent as you can. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. There might be important information in the apartment. I mean, there might. Oh, there might be. 